Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Welcome to Jesus King Podcast. How you doing, Emil? Well, thanks. How are you? Good, man. Uh, we're doing our second part. Yes. And in this part, we're doing what it costs to carry our own cross. Yeah. We spoke about how amazing it is for God to come in the flesh, take on the cross, yes. and do all that for us. Uh, but in this second um, episode, yeah. it's something that is very difficult for us as Christians mm -hmm. because we often enjoy the cross of Christ, but we don't get to enjoy carrying our own cross. Yeah. And it's not something that we obviously are making up here, guys. It's something that Jesus actually calls his own followers. Yes. I'll start that with a verse and then we can have this discussion. Sure. And that's Luke 9, 23. Then he said to them all, and I like the word all here. Yes. Um, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Verse 24 might be also helpful for us. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Yes. Amen. So that's our topic for for this episode. Yes. So what does it cost? Uh, well, it costs what? It costs Jesus everything. <laughs> it, cost, um, it can cost us everything. It can cost us our I family. Like it can cost us our family. It can cost us our jobs. It can cost us our... Um, our money, our possessions, our worldly happiness. If it's and and that's the thing. It's um, it's important that uh, we invest our happiness into things that are not physical, because in case we lose them, we don't lose our happiness. Mm -hmm. uh, if we put our hope and our happiness and our faith in physical things, and then we try to carry the cross, um. We end up losing our physical things then we lose our hope and we lose our happiness and we lose our way and we're like oh i don't want to carry this cross anymore it's, it's too heavy the burden's too much so that's where jesus always says like you know to give up your positions to get rid of what you have and less of you more of me type yeah. of thing and that's where we have to be more like jesus and be more selfless and have less of ourselves and so what, what can it cost us it can cost us everything it, it does eh? um and I really like it because it kind of connects to the verse. Mm -hmm. It says he must deny himself. Amen. So, I mean, as human beings, we grow up, we develop our own character, the way we talk, the way we behave, um, the things that we like or dislike. And then it comes to a point where this figure comes into your life, yeah. this Jesus guy, you know, saying, uh, hey, by the way, I can offer you life, yeah. but in order for you to have this life, you must lose your own yeah. and you will receive a new one. And you will you also lose your own identity. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people get scared when they hear these words of Jesus. Yeah. I don't want to lose my identity, but the whole point of losing one's identity it's for you to receive a new one. Yes. It's like trying to <clears throat> fill a cup that's already full. You can't. What Jesus wants to do, he's asking us to empty ourselves so he can fill it himself. Yeah. So, and, and I guess we can take a little pause here, especially in our culture today. Identity is a big problem. Yeah. Maybe we can talk about that a bit. Sure, sure. What would you like I, to talk about? I know about the topic it? is about following Christ, carrying your cross, and we got time for that. But I really want to talk about this idea that the world is so confused as to what identity we need to adopt. Yeah. And Jesus gives you the answer right there. Yeah. His. Yeah. <laughs> His one. His identity. <laughs> yeah. And and I think for Christians. Sometimes we do identify ourselves when it comes to politics, for example, mm -hmm. I'm a conservative, or when it comes to your nationality, culture, language, um, your, your family name, you know, so, some people, their family name, is, it's a big deal to them. Yeah. So they hold on to these identities 
and sometimes they like to merge them with Christ. You know, they find a way to say, this is okay if I can try and convince myself as to say, it is it, it means to be a Christian. But the whole point of us having this identity in Christ is this identity doesn't come from anything in this world. Incorruptible. Yes. It's something that comes from heaven above. Yeah. And that's where Jesus came from to die on the cross for us. Yeah. So I believe it's something very important, guys, is I know we have those little identity, you know, as who our families are, what our culture is, where we stand in sports, politics, wherever, whatever it, it is. Exceptions. But your ultimate identity needs to be I am a Christian yeah. first. Yeah. And I think as a Christian first, because sometimes I'm up, we have, you know, this, um, you know, this kind of little belief that I can identify with my political beliefs and I can merge Christianity into it rather than say, no. well, I want to identify as a Christian and I will see life with the lenses of Christ. Yeah, like, for example, let's say if you want to vote for your leadership in government and you see one one side leans more towards your beliefs than the other, it's not that your beliefs lean towards that more, it's that it leads towards your beliefs more. So you vote for that government because it seems more in line with what your, um, with what Jesus' characteristics and his nature is. So if it's one that promotes more, you know, a uh, more conservative family, more uh, more emphasis on um, freedom for the church and things like that, then obviously you'd want to vote for that. But if if it's some if it's a government that's taking away from from your uh, from your freedoms of you know religious freedoms and uh, taking away your right to teach your kids the way you want to teach them, I'm not I'm not trying to support any political um entity here or anything like that I'm, I'm kind of apolitical i don't have a side really mm. um and look sometimes even you and i disagree politically and that's not important yeah. ultimately we have one agreement which is this is the word of god this is I I incorruptible this is what we follow everything else is additional everything else is it's not that important to be honest we can disagree yeah. it doesn't matter yeah at the end of the day we're brothers in christ that's all that matters um, and that's what our focus should be. And, and I was once in a, in a, in a church, uh, what are they calling it? There's a, like a big group of people come. Conference. 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 That's it. A church yeah. conference, a big one. And one of the pastors there said something really, really amazing. And you remind me of that. And he said, imagine a cup of water, right? It's empty. It's just a, it's just a glass at the moment. And you have a drop of dirty water in it. And that's your current identity, your, your current political view, whatever, whatever it is. That is dirty water. If you add the, like the rest of the glass, imagine just a drop, the rest of the glass, clean water. Now the whole glass is dirty, right? Mm. Even though it's only a drop, but now the whole glass, it's, if you drink it, you're going to get sick. So it's, you have to throw it all out. So you can't have any part of you left that is going to be against the word of God against what Jesus teaches. You have to get rid of it all because otherwise the whole thing's going to be corrupted. You can't have a little bit of you. It has to be all Jesus because the moment something that's from you is going against the word of God, against what God wants, then the whole thing falls apart. Yeah, like a like a drop of poison. Yeah. It, that's enough to kill that's you, enough right? To kill you. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> make sure you, you, you don't pollute your, your old self with the new man, with, with the new identity that we have in Christ. Yeah. Um, in saying that, it seems like carrying the cross that leads you to strip yourself of who you used to be mm -hmm. and follow Jesus. It seems that <clears throat> this cross is not a cross that you get to choose. No. So, because, you know, there is this idea and and people don't con confess it but it it does happen it's we like to choose our own cross 
you know it almost feels like i want to follow jesus by this way yeah and i want to go to this kind of shop and i'm like jesus i'm just going to look around which cross suits me best and that's what i want to carry or not even carry some people like to carry around their neck they're like the easy way out right god this cross is so big and Jesus is like, well, it's comfortably around your neck. It's yeah. not like you're actually carrying it a, a cross. And, and what makes a cross a cross, it's, uh, it's unbearable at it's times. A yeah, it's a big burden. It's, um, it's something that it's impossible for you to shoulder alone. It's in your nature. God built in you a defensive mechanism that does not want you to die. It's self-preservation, right? It's built in us. That's why we feel hunger. That's why we feel fear when you're at a height. It's natural. This is normal. This is built in us to keep us alive. You're going against that very nature when you fast, right? When you carry your cross, you're going against the nature. You're literally, literally walking towards that what could be possibly your death. Sometimes. Sometimes it's your, um, your uh, social death, like, you know, with your family. They can cut you off. They can throw you out if it's if you're in a country where christianity is uh persecuted then it could also mean death mm -hmm. literally death and and you have to weigh the cost you have to know what it's going to cost you and it's not going to be cheap i'm telling you if, if it's e if your life is easy and you and you think you're carrying the cross and and or you are carrying the cross and you're saying oh this is very easy nothing's going wrong everything's going well um yeah, and then something happens bad, and something bad happens, and you're like, you're surprised. No, it's the other way around. It's when nothing was going wrong, you should have been surprised. Like, why am I, why is everything fine? Why does the world love me and treating me well when I'm, when it's supposed to be my enemy? Or maybe it's not your enemy at that point. Maybe at that point, you're so comfortable with life and preoccupied with life, you weren't carrying a cross. You were just having on your neck, like Martin said. And the moment you actually did start to do what God wanted you to do, you notice the wall started crumbling in, caving in, and yeah. your world started, you know, coming apart. And then that's when you're like, you cower and because you didn't weigh the cost. Yeah, it, it it's funny because um, I've, I've done a lot of, um, you know, preaching and teaching on this topic. And one of the points that I always like to bring out is often we do pray, Jesus, I want to be like you, right? And then you see, as you said, life crumbles, right? Um, your family might reject you because of your faith. Yeah. You might lose your job because of your faith. Um, you know, the, the devil's on your back kind of thing. And you go back to God and you're like, why did God, this why is all these things happening to me? And it's just the general reply is, well, you wanted to be like my son. Yeah. What did you expect? Jesus went through all the trouble. And that was part of carrying his cross. Yeah. So this whole idea, as you said, you said, life cannot be comfortable for a Christian if that Christian is actively living at his faith. Amen. The reason why we live a comfortable life as Christians is because we're not actively living at our faith. Yeah. Second Timothy 3.12 speaks that if anyone is following Jesus, if anyone is in Christ, he must suffer. It's it's part of who we are as Christians. Now, in saying that, we're not saying that Christians love suffering. No, we're not saying Christians should be looking for suffering. No. no. Don't choose your own cross. Yeah. We, we are called to love the world, right? And the world, not in the sense of sin, but the world as in the people that live in this world. Our brothers and sisters in humanity. Yeah. But the yeah. God of this world, the devil doesn't command his own people to do likewise right he the the world will hate you jesus spoke about it because it hated me first so it's not that we are chasing suffering it's suffering is part of the christian life it's a consequence if we are active in our faith mm. and it's easy for me to say you know what i'm not going to preach to that person because that person might be hostile to me I've just dodged my cross. I didn't pick up my cross on that day. Um, I'm not going to correct a 
that that person or a brother in Christ because that person is not living in truth or not living in holiness. I've just dodged the cross. I've put it away. Yeah. So we make a lot of decisions every single day, whether do I really want to deal with this situation and carry a cross or should I put it away? Yeah, and we see a good example of that, of someone dodging the cross with Jonah. I mean, he did it really well. Uh, he just got on a boat and sailed away. And then, you know, when the, when everyone on the boat said, hey, what's going on? Why, why, why is God angry? <laughs> Who, who's, who's wrong? God. And he says, yeah, it's, I mean, honestly, props to him. He actually put his hand up and said, yeah, it was me. <laughs> and he's like, okay, thanks for being honest. <laughs> they try to fix it. Nope. Yeah. All right, get out. <laughs> and then the big fish ate him. Um, I swallowed him. I should say it didn't get eaten, yeah. it got swallowed. Um, and then you know, this is what happens when you run away from what God wants you to do. There are consequences, especially if you're with God. If you're not with God, then yeah, you weren't called to it anyway. There's no point. But if God is calling you to something and you're dodging it, there will be consequences because God wants it's 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 not like God wants to destroy you. No, he wants to put you on the right path again. And the moment you do and, and look, he went he went all the way to Ninva, hmm. Jonah. That was not a not an easy task. I mean, he's going to a nation that's foreign, right? They've got their own gods, they've got their own beliefs, they've got their own thing, mm. they've got their own laws, and he's going before their king. and And let me tell you, Ninva was not known for uh, their mercy. Um, <laughs> they were very hostile, yeah, uh, and they were very aggressive and and, and very prideful. And um, yeah, so when he went to them and he told them, sure enough, they all fasted and did what God instructed and um and that's it and you know and and then jonah finished the task it was as simple as that just do your task yeah. and look but sometimes it could have cost him his life that's a very real possibility he yeah. was aware of that that's why he was afraid but if you do not weigh the cost he weighed the cost and he saw it was too much but then when he got swallowed by, <laughs> by the fish he weighed the cost of disobeying um so yeah some yeah. sometimes we see that the cost of obeying jesus is pricey but sometimes we see the cost of disobeying is even worse because mm. we're wise yeah but sometimes we literally need a fish to swallow us to realize it um but if you if you fear god you have the wisdom from god right because you fear god and that's the beginning of wisdom and if we fear god we will see the cost of disobeying god so it's like no matter what it costs it, it's worse if i disobey god because I have yeah. wisdom. I don't need to go through it to know. I just have wisdom to know that. So I will obey God and I'll be faithful to God, even if it costs me my life, even if it costs me my family. And it could be their lives as well, unfortunately, sometimes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. Um, and, and it reminds me of um, what Paul says in Galatians 2.20. He's saying, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Mm. I just enjoy that, that this whole idea, as, as you were talking about, it's all about God. It's yes. you pick up that cross, your life no longer belongs to, to you. You, no. you got to live a life of obedient. It's Christ who lives in me. Yes. He's in control. He's the one that's guiding me where to go. And which, what's interesting about this, he's not talking about walking with the cross or carrying the cross. He's saying, I have been crucified with Christ. Yeah. So this whole idea that I get to choose and pick up my cross one day and the next I'll put it away. And then whenever I feel like I'll put it back on, that's not the intention of, of the cross. Jesus says, you pick up your cross, you follow me daily. Mm -hmm. Paul saying, I have been crucified. So the whole idea that when a person picks up their cross, it's not like they're going to go around walking for an exercise. No. They pick it up to go and be crucified on it. Yeah. One of the signs that shows that we are dead to this world is having this cross on or being crucified on yeah. and that's something very important if you're gonna if, if you've ever thought about this question in regards to say am i really dead to this world ask yourself this am i carrying my cross yeah that that's a good indication to show 
have I been dead? Is is Christ, am I being just a vessel where Christ is living in me? Mm -hmm. And his decisions and his rules and his directions is, is what's leading me in this life? Or is it God, give me this little tiny cross around my neck and, and I'll be in charge of my life? Yeah. Um, I, I think it's, it, it is a heavy burden and I understand. And mm -hmm. that's why you said we're walking with Christ. We're not alone. Um, and keep that in mind because I did say it's impossible to carry a cross by itself. It's, it's hard to do while, while you're alone and you're just being persecuted and you're by yourself. It's, yes. It's, especially if there's no goal as well and there's no reward and there's nothing for it. You're just doing it for, for nothing. But we know we're not doing it for nothing because we have faith in our hope and it's in Jesus. We have faith that Jesus is with us. We have hope that, you know, that Jesus has died for us on the cross and that once we are faithful to him and we do everything right, we're going to be rewarded not on earth. No, no. Our hope is not on earth. Our investment is not on earth. That's why we're giving up everything. This is not important to us. What's important is our inheritance in heaven. The kingdom of God is not on earth. It's not here. It's not in flesh. It's in heaven. It's, it's in its spirit. Mm. So why are you investing in flesh? In your time, in your, in your sacrifice, in your everything is, is all for the flesh. I mean, I, I think about it sometimes when I'm, you know, working 10 hours a day, which is not much to be honest with you, but still, mm. you know, and, and, and then I work 10 hours a day, five days a week. And then how much time do I spend with God? What, what am I really investing in the flesh? Mm. But is that going to satisfy? Yeah. It's going to satisfy the flesh temporarily. But ultimately, if everything goes wrong in, in my world, in my flesh, and I end up with nothing, lose my house, lose my car, lose everything, and I have nothing, will I be happy? I mean, I've been investing all everything in the physical. What have I invested spiritually? Mm. What do I have to have hope in? And that, that's why we have to be careful not to invest too much into the physical. It's just enough for us to be alive. Yeah. Enough for us and our families to be comfortable. And then the rest, we just put all invest everything imagine knowing that uh, for example a stock is going to go up uh, a thousand times tomorrow would you not or, or in, in a year from now let's say would you not eat bread and water just to have enough money just to put all in there yeah right especially if you knew for a fact that it was going to happen you know for a fact you're going to go to heaven why are you investing on earth yeah it's, it's this is just the blink of an eye right and, and this is the thing it's we need to have faith we need to have faith that god is there with us that jesus what jesus said is a fact this is going to happen this is this is the future this is the prediction that jesus gave us this is what he told us this is a fact it's going to happen and you believe in jesus yeah i, I read to you colossians 3 verse 1 sure and uh if you because since you were talking about it if then you were raised with christ seek those things which are above so as, as you were talking about where christ is sitting at the right hand of god Set your minds on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died, which we spoke about with Paul, yes. and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Then Christ, who is our life, appears. Then you also will appear with him in glory. So this whole idea that you focus your eyes on heaven, you also set your mind in heaven because your life here, you've died and your life is hidden in Christ. And when Christ appears, that's when you get to share and enjoy the glory that God has prepared yes. for you. Um, I really want to share this point as well. It, it just, because as you were talking, um, I, it, I just was reminded by Hebrews 13. Yeah. In verse two, and, and, and this is, it, this is what the writer of Hebrew is saying. Um, he's saying, do not forget to entertain strangers for by doing so, some have unwittingly entertained angels. Verse three, remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated since you yourselves are in the body also. Mm. I really want to bring that point and we can, we can have a bit of a discussion, discussion on it in regards to carrying other people's cross mm. and being there for people you, you know how you because you said 
you were mentioning this, and that's why I'm sharing this point. You said that when you're carrying your cross, it almost feels like it's impossible. And that's why Christ is there with you. Amen. He's aiding you. He's carrying it with you. You're not alone. And that reminds me that we need to have the same mindset as Christ. Yeah. If Christ is helping to carry our cross, we help others, we help others carry yeah. their cross. Yes. And this is something that along the line I'll share with you also. Um, I never th thought of it that way. Yeah. Uh, th this is, uh, you got, where is it? Galatians, I believe it's chapter 6. Verse 1, he's saying, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Amen. I like it. He's saying that, um, you know, if, if someone is falling into sin, sh with the spirit of gentleness, bring them back also carry each other's burdens yeah and and one of our burdens as we were speaking about is a cross right it's a burden and 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 if i see my brother is struggling with with their with what they are going through mm. like one of the examples we said that a cross can be if your family rejects you for your faith yeah. and that's very common out there yeah um, shouldn't we be there to encourage them but what would that and, look like? Can you give me an example? Because I'm sure people are wondering what that would look like. Like, for example, if you have a cross to yeah. carry, yeah. a heavy cross, a, it's it's a burden to you. And to ease your heart, I want to help you. How would I do that? Uh, well, well, that's why I was giving this example of, for example, a family rejection. Yeah. If they reject you for your faith, me, who, who I am a brother in Christ, I'm there to be their family as well. Mm. I'm there to show them warmth, love, care, compassion. And, and some people might even be kicked out of the house. What am I to do then? Open your house up to them. Open my house to them. So I am sharing in that suffering and say, you're not alone in this. Yeah. I'm here to help out. Yeah. So that's one of the examples. And, and today I was watching a video in regards to what christians are going through in pakistan at the moment and i even want i was watching an atheist um channel yeah. and this atheist i love his work because he does a lot of work against islam uh the apostate prophet and he said he he was actually calling out christians he's saying christians where are you because the churches are being burned christians are suffering and being persecuted what are you doing about it? Mm. You're not even, you're not even sharing their voice. So they are alone at this. Yeah. So this is why I see Hebrews 13 to say, you got to remember those who are struggling, those who are in persecution, because we are one body. Yeah. And I always like to bring this analogy. I said, if your finger is hurting you, the rest of the body is not going to be like, oh, well, I'm fine. I don't care about it. No, your whole body tends to focus on that on finger, that, yeah. right? Because that pain is going through you, right? Through your mm -hmm. whole body. You got to deal with the pain. And that gives not only relief to your finger, but also gives relief to the to, rest of you. Yeah, to the yeah. rest of you. So this whole idea to think that, well, I might be living in a Western um world it's not my problem and, and it's not my problem the church here is doing okay there's not much persecution but you know i'll throw a reminder to pray here and there for them that's not what christ is calling us to do i think that's where james comes in the book of james where he's mm -hmm. talking about like if someone's in need and they're hungry and you say you know uh, god bless you and you just kind of oh, yeah. give them a prayer that's not what they need yeah they need money they need food they need they need to be clothed they need to be fed they need a home they need a they need someone to to support them and i think that's what my question was which is what does it look like it's not sometimes it's spiritual if their problem is spiritual mm. but if their problem is physical i'm not gonna if if you need money to buy food and, you, and you're struggling mm. i'm not gonna be like yeah i'll pray for you if i have the money here's the money <laughs> problem solved yeah you know um I, i'm sure that you know he's been praying for a solution and am i not god's instrument yeah 
Am I not going to be used to assist you? Does God not use people to assist people with problems? And I know some people wait for a divine, like, you know, manner coming from the heavens, but I mean, why, why do you want things done your way? And it's the same thing for the people that, you know, say, oh, I'll pray for you. They expect manner to come from the heaven. No, you be that miracle. God is going to use you to be that, you know, that, yeah. that, that miracle in that person's life to bless those people. You know, he's going to use you. And there's nothing wrong with that. And, and, and I, think, I think people have to be open, open their heart to, to God and the way he wants to do things. And, and to be less selfish and, less, and more selfless and think more about the suffering of others and have that love for them that God has for them. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So I'll summarize what we've spoken sure. about and then I'll get your final thoughts. Sure. Um, Jesus is calling us to follow him and part of following Jesus is carrying the cross. Yes. By carrying our cross, we are losing our identity. We are emptying ourselves to be filled with who Jesus wants us to be. Yeah. That cross might lead to death. Yes. And that's, we see um, even like dying to the flesh, as Paul saying that I have been crucified with Christ. Mm -hmm. It's no longer that I'm living. It's no longer that I'm in control. It's Christ who's in control. Yes in my life that cross can be very heavy jesus is there to help us carry our cross mm -hmm. by learning from jesus we also get to help others as they carry their cross and and this is that was the final point as we were talking about so this is the summary of what we were talking about today mm -hmm. uh what's your final thoughts on the series we spoke about part one part two yeah it was it was very nice. I enjoyed it. I think for both parts, the ultimate, the ultimate conclusion is Jesus is our hope. Not nothing in this world, nothing you can do, nothing you and I will ever do, is going to be our hope. There's not. It's it's temporary. The only hope we can ever have in both in both part one and two is Jesus, mm. right? Your hope mm -hmm. in carrying the cross, the light at the end of the tunnel, is not that the cross is going to get lighter. No, no, no. It might even get heavier. It might never end until you end. It's Jesus. He is the light at the end of the tunnel. That's all there'll ever be. So fixate on him. And I think the cross is going to feel a lot lighter. Yeah. Amen. Don't um, don't find it to be a path that is not desirable in your life. It's what Jesus has prepared for us in this world as we follow him. And it's it's not a decision that we get to make on our own it's it's something that is a cost that comes in following jesus yeah. you saw what jesus did for you when it came to carrying his cross when it comes to our own afflictions i like how um uh, paul says in romans 8 he's mm -hmm. saying that our afflictions when it comes to the light of eternity is very light yeah right if you compare it to eternity and the glory and the reward of it it seems as if it's nothing yeah. so i wouldn't value this life that is what 60 to 80 to 90 to 100 years compared to eternity it's nothing it's just a blink of an eye yeah so i encourage you part of carrying your cross is totally surrendering to jesus Surrender yourself to Jesus yes. and let Jesus take over. God bless you all, and I hope that you've enjoyed it. We would like you uh, to comment. We would yes. like to get your opinions, what you've been thinking about the podcast so far. Yeah. Uh, we are enjoying this journey, and I really hope that you guys are enjoying this journey with us. God bless you all, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Take care.